The top stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. sets to concentrate on the country's energy security interests in his APEC summit participation in California later this year. PBBN says there is no existing agreement between the Philippines and China to remove BRP Sierra Madre from the Ayungin Shoal. A lawmaker criticizes the Bureau of Plant Industry for not imposing a storage time period for onion suppliers. And deadly Russian attack strikes two times in Ukrainian city, damaging residences and killing civilians, specifically rescue workers and first responders on site. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, August 9, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Elsie Marcos. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Marvi Delfin. First in the news, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. confirmed his attendance to the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Leaders Meeting in the United States in November. He is expected to join other leaders of APEX 21 member economies in its annual series of conferences that would happen in San Francisco later this year. Nel Maribojo reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. will participate in the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC Summit in San Francisco, California in November. He said this during a meeting with a business delegation from the United States and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or U.S. ASEAN in Malacanang. The Philippines is actively participating in the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework and the APEC meetings leading up to the Leaders' Summit in San Francisco in November. I look forward to joining fellow APEC leaders in California later this year. Uh, this will be my third trip to the U.S. since I assumed office. The President said that we would advance the country's energy security interest when he joins his fellow APEC leaders during the Economic Blocks gathering in San Francisco, California later this year. With energy security high in the economic agenda, we are particularly interested in sustainable land, water, and ocean solutions that align with our climate goals and support our plans to transform the Philippines into an upper middle income country by the year 2025. PBBM also raised the need for synergies through alliances, partnerships, and arrangements with the country's ASEAN and American partners. He expressed hope to see more engagements involving both the government and private sector, especially in mobilizing financial resources for investments in key areas such as critical infrastructure, research and development, and human capital development. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. emphasized that there is no existing agreement between the Philippines and China to remove BRP Sierra Madre from a union show. Contrary to the latter's claims that the Philippine government earlier promised to remove the military vessel. The chief executive added that he is repealing any commitment should there be an existing agreement between Manila and Beijing on the supposed removal of the said Philippine vessel from a union show. I'm not aware of any agreement uh, that the Philippines should remove from its own territory, its own <laughs> ship, the BSP Sierra Madre from the Union show. And let me go further. If there does exist such an agreement, I rescind that agreement as of now.
The complaints filed before the Department of Justice against some foreign individuals over the Pogo Hub raid in Las Piñas City may not be resolved immediately. Dante Amento tells us why. The panel of prosecutors of the Department of Justice or DOJ continued the preliminary investigation on the complaints filed against several Chinese nationals today, August 9. This is over the raid in a Pogo Hub in Las Piñas City last June. So, nag-push to naman yung preliminary investigation. Nakapag-submit kami ng counter-affidavit. And dumating naman yung mga clients namin. Hindi na naman ng mga police. Attorney Melvin Bermudez, lawyer for the respondents, said the Philippine National Police or PNP submitted additional or supplemental complaints. Human trafficking daw, cybercrime, violation of cybercrime law. Tapos ngayon may mga dinadagdag sila sa BI. So, tinan natin. May mga dinadagdag kasi sila eh. Attorney Bermudez further said their clients also submitted counter-affidavits denying the allegations against them. Yung iba doon is, uh, is visitors lang. Yun lang mabibigay ko. Yung involved dito sa PIA, yung iba is visitors lang. And yung at the time of raid, uh, yun nga, nasa in the wrong place at the wrong time lang talaga sila. Due to the additional complaints, the panel gave ample time for the respondents to reply on August 30, 2023. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. There are no more cheap rice priced at 25 pesos per kilo available at the Kadiwa store in Quezon City since Monday. However, some shoppers are still returning and hoping for a new supply of affordable rice. Masakit sa kalooban dahil yung iba na umuwi, luhaan. Dahil kailangan nyo ng bigas, pag-uwi nyo lang, wala silang dalampi na uh, bigas. Dala nila sopot, sopot pa rin pag-uwi. Inaasahan po namin, hindi kami nawala ng pag-asa. Alam naman namin na uh, Panginoon ang nagpo-provide niyan. According to some store attendants, the sale of rice at 25 pesos per kilo has been temporarily halted because the supply from Nueva Ecija has been exhausted. The supplier of affordable rice, Unigro Philippines, announced last month that they can continue supplying the Kadiwa store until August. For those looking for rice, they can still purchase special rice at the Kadiwa store, priced at 47 pesos per kilo, which is cheaper compared to the market's price of 48 to 50 pesos per kilo. Pung bigas, nung pa pung last week sinabing wala nung Monday. Kaya alam na po nila, kahapon po wala pa rin, hanggang ngayon po wala pa rin. Parang wala pa pong supply. A farmers and millers group projects that the price of rice will continuously increase. Meanwhile, the Department of Agriculture assures that the supply of rice is still sufficient for the following month. Ray Palayo will tell us why. The Federation of Free Farmers is concerned about the status of rice supply in the country during the lean season, especially next month. Kung wala nang ibang pumasok na stocks by September 1, our stocks will be good for only 9 days. No? Eh, September is 30 days. No? So saan pwede manggaling yung stock? Number one is from imports. No? Number one is from early harvests. However, the problem lies in the tightness of supply and the high price in the world market. The farmers group noted that around 700,000 metric tons are needed to fulfill the necessary supply. According to Montemayor, importers are not very willing to bring the rice into the country due to uncertainty. Okay, 700,000 metric tons needs about 25 billion pesos. Billion na lang, billion. Okay. So, uh, I don't think the government will have uh, the money to come, the, the money, that kind of money in such a short time. No? Uh, saan nila kukunin yung pera? A rice miller in Bulacan mentioned that the prices of paddy rice they buy are now at 34 pesos per kilogram. It would be sold at around 54 pesos per kilogram at retail. Oh, Ay, ngayon lang nangyari yun. Sa larangan ng 
uh, palay na ng bentahan sa ganitong linmans, ngayon lang nangyari yung ganyang katas. The Department of Agriculture said that the local production of rice this year is projected to be a record-breaking one. Basta wag lang tayong tamaan ng mga malalakas na bagyo. Lalampasan natin yung 2021 kasi 2022 production. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad, in response to the emergence of a new variant of coronavirus disease in the United Kingdom, significant changes have been announced regarding the country's vaccination strategy for the upcoming winter season. Free flu jabs and COVID-19 boosters will no longer be extended to almost 12 million Britons as health authorities aim to prioritize those at higher risk of severe illness. Hosilito Liquido will tell us the details live. Yes, Hosilito, good evening. Good evening, LC. The Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunization, or JCVI, recently unveiled a revised National Health Service, or NHS, guidelines that will determine eligibility for free vaccinations. Notably, individuals aged 50 to 64 who are otherwise in good health will no longer be eligible for complementary COVID-19 booster doses. Instead, the vaccination focus will shift to those identified as most likely to benefit from the booster shots due to their elevated risk of serious disease. The redefined criteria for COVID-19 booster eligibility includes residents of care homes caring to older adults, individuals aged over 65 and those within the age range of 6 months to 64 who belong to the clinical risk groups. Frontline health and social care workers are also among the prioritized groups along with individuals aged 12 to 64 who serve as caregivers or live with people having immunosuppression conditions. The Department for Health and Social Care has given its approval to an updated guidance set forth by the JCVI. This change parallels a similar shift in guidance pertaining to the flu jab, resulting to approximately 12 million people no longer qualifying for complementary flu vaccines. The individuals who fall outside the scope of these revised eligibility criteria will also not be able to purchase COVID vaccines privately in the UK as they are not available, available for private sale. Professor Wei Shen Lim, who chairs the COVID-19 immunization panel within the GCVI, emphasized that the autumn booster program will remain concentrated on those who face greater risk of developing severe illness, especially during the winter months. Dr. Mary Ramsey, Director of Public Health Programs at the UK Health Security Agency, issued a cautionary reminder that the threat posed by the COVID-19 has not subsided. She underlined the importance of the booster vaccine in offering increased protection ahead of the seasonal peak for respiratory viruses. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Joselito Liquido, for that live report. We'll share more global stories with you later. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. A lawmaker criticized the Bureau of Plant Industry for not imposing a storage time period for onion suppliers. JP Nunez will tell us why. The House Committee on Agriculture and Food continued its motto proprio inquiry into the possible hoarding and price manipulation of onions in the market earlier today, August 9. During the hearing, Elpidio Barzaga Jr., the representative of the 4th District of Cavite, criticized the Bureau of Plant and Industry for not imposing an allowable time period for cold storage facilities regarding how long they can store onion supplies. The lawmaker mentioned that without regulations, onion suppliers may resort to hoarding. Wala kayong batas sa cold storage na dapat hanggang 30 days lamang yan. And that's the reason why they can store it for 8 up to 12 months a year. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng hoarding and price manipulation because of your failure. 
The Bureau of Plant Industry stated that they still need to consult their legal division to determine if they can impose regulations. This implies that onion suppliers may store their supply for a certain number of months. Sir, yan din po yung i-check namin doon sa legal po na. The committee will continue the investigation. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. While having MRT and LRT helps reduce traffic congestion significantly, it still occasionally leads to long passenger queues. According to the Department of Transportation, the reason is the use of single journey tickets by passengers. But to address this, DOTR reportedly has a solution. Alan Manansala will tell us why. Department of Transportation Under Secretary Cesar Chavez explains the advantages when a passenger of the Metro Manila Rail Transit System or MRT and Light Rail Transit System or LRT uses a stored value ticket compared to using a single journey ticket. He mentioned that aside from the convenience, this also addresses the tangled traffic currently experienced on the roads in Metro Manila. Uh, marami pa rin sa atin sa mga kababayan natin. Mas pinipili ho yung uh, bumili ng single journey ticket kaysa stored value. Pagkat kung may stored value ticket ka, hindi ka nakalang pili ka. Akit ka, dire-direcho ka na sa platform. Based on the DOTR's database, the MRT3 is now able to accommodate 375,000 up to 400,000 passengers daily using 24 train sets. However, around 40% of commuters still reportedly choose to use the single journey ticket. Kasi ang sabi nila, wala naman akong ganun kalaking pera para mag-impact ng 501,000. So, yun ang dahilan kung, kung bakit pamisan niya sa may traffic. Earlier, during an interview with some media personalities on a social media program, Yusek Chavez mentioned that using a stored value ticket is still a favorable option. Well, we encourage that our employees are using it. If you are a regular employee, you know that every day you are going to be able to get it. You are going to be able to get it. You are going to be able to get it. You are going to be able to get it. You are going to be able to get it. Galing ka sa ilang bahagi ng Queso City, sasakay ka ng Lord, sasakay ka ng Queso Rabel, at alam mo, araw-araw. Pwede ka na mag-invoke, uh, mag, uh, mag, mag-save uh, ng halimbawa, at least uh, for five days. And in case this happens, some journalists here suggested turning the loading system for stored value tickets into a company credit or deducting it directly from the salary. Pwede yung company credit. Alam nyo yun, yung parang diretso bawas sweldo. Kasi, di ba parang maghanap tayo ng puno mga para. Kunyari, ah, nagkatrabaho ko sa AC company, parang ganon. Di ba? O wala akong ganon pera. Eh pero, bibilin ko rin naman yan, pipila din naman ako, sasakay din naman ako. Hindi ba po pwede na parang parang SSS contribution, parang ganon. No? Parang meron line credit sa kumpanya mo, Di ba, dahil hindi mo nahihintay yung sondo, hindi ko makakasakay, na po, pwede pong doon na tayo tayo dumirekta na may line credit po sila. Response of the Secretary. <laughs> In fact, pwede namin gawin yan. Pwede yeah, namin no, gawin po. yan sa uh, social media accounts. Pwede namin gawin mm. yan sa mga istasyon. Ini-encourage mm. namin yung mga mananakay, regular na mga mananakay, to strike a deal with the employers. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, yung the usual na cash advance, cash advance. Eto, mm. uh, digital cash advance, maglagay sa, mm. sa kanilang... Uh, uh, packet wallet nila at uh, mm -hmm. dito sa Gcash mag, it's a good it's a good uh, idea it's a good idea and I yeah, think uh, it will be highly recommended by the by MRT LRT lines 1 and 2 in a study around 3 to 5 percent of the cost ends up being spent on an employee's transportation fare if the proposal is approved employees could potentially borrow their fare from the company by loading it onto a stored value ticket in conclusion, Yusef Chavez stated that the long queues experience at MRT and LRT can no longer be blamed solely on a lack of train cars. Alan Manansala, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The sex cops involved in the death of 17-year-old Jemboy Baltasar in Navota City on August 2 have been detained. 
This is a case of mistaken identity where the police allegedly mistook him for a suspect they were chasing. Relatives of the victim have filed a homicide case against the policemen involved in the incident. The Internal Affairs Service of the PNP is also conducting an investigation for administrative cases. Even the two team leaders of the group have been relieved from their posts and are also being investigated for any potential failure in the said operation. The victim's relatives have decided not to settle and are determined to proceed with the case filed against the police officers. Nakadetain na po sila sa investigation, nakakulong po sila. At uh, ni-request po namin na ililipat sila sa NPD custodial facility kasi po. Mahirap po na magkakasama sila doon sa custodial facility kasi yung ibang nakakulong doon ay uh, sila din po ang uh, nakahuli at uh, iniwasan po natin yung uh, yung uh, masamang mangyari kaya ang posibleng insidente at iniwasan din po natin ng speculations na may special treatment sa kanila. And in other global news, deadly Russian attacks strikes two times in the Donetsk region of Prokhrov's damaging residences and multiple buildings nearby, killing nine and injuring 82 civilians, specifically rescue workers and first responders on site. Ryuji Sasaki will give us the details live. Yes, Ryuji, good evening. Good evening, LC. The bombardment took place at 7.15 p.m. on Monday, August 7, local time, when a short-range ballistic missile hit residential buildings in the center of the eastern Ukrainian city, followed by a second missile attack. The strikes in Pokrovsk appeared to be a double-tap attack, in which troops conduct a first missile strike, wait, and then fire a second projectile shortly after, allegedly targeting the emergency works responding to the initial attack. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, the victims of the attack were either residents, including children, or first responders from Ukraine's state emergency service, as well as dozens of police officers. The Ukrainian pres president reiterated that the second strike on Pokrovsk occurred during the rescue operation, indicating it was a conscious decision of terrorists to cause the most pain and damage. Meanwhile, the debris cleanup had resumed and rescue operations were in full swing, according to the State Emergency Service. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Ryuji Sasaki. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has been barred from running for office for five years after being found guilty last week in a corruption trial. Mr. Khan was arrested over the weekend at his home in Lahore and was transported to Islamabad where he will be detained in prison for three years. The Election Commission of Pakistan's or ECP announced the order on Tuesday, August 8, following the result of the trial relating to an injury which found Mr. Khan guilty of misdeclaring gifts he received during his time as Prime Minister from 2018 to 2022. Since being ousted last year through a parliamentary no-confidence vote, Mr. Khan has led a populist campaign against the government being led by current Prime Minister Shazbaz Jarif. Pakistan's government has denied allegations from Mr. Khan's campaign that Mr. Sharif is colluding with senior officials to remove him from office and that his arrest is politically motivated. Mr. Khan's legal team has lodged an appeal in the Islamabad High Court against the decision which will be taken up on Wednesday. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. UNTV was among the media outfits recognized by the Philippine Space Agency. The agency acknowledged the station's contribution through its Sirbishong by Nihan program, which helped Filsa inform the public about its services and programs. Gladys Tuabi has the report. More than delivering timely and accurate news and stories, UNTV focuses on helping others first. As a public service channel, 
UN TV has programs like UN TV News and Rescue, which assists people in giving first aid, and the Servisyong Bayanihan Program, where it grants people requests and provides a platform for government agencies and organizations to promote their programs and services. As the Philippine Space Agency celebrates its fourth anniversary since its establishment in 2019, the agency awarded and recognized UNTV for its help and contribution since the agency's inception. Yun ang challenge. It's a, it's ma, hindi madali siya. Um, maraming say, scientists, engineers, researchers, policy people, administrators sa space agency, but we also need communicators. And that's where the important role of the media is, uh, comes in. Kasi nga, ngayon, apat na taon ng PSA, marami pa rin nagsasabi na meron pala tayong space agency. And it's also important that every Filipino knows through you, through media, kung ano yung mga rights natin sa space, kung ano yung mga treaties dyan na nag-govern dyan, so that every Filipino will be inspired, as we are inspired, to continue exploring and expanding. UNTV has been a partner to the agency since the beginning, making the public well aware of the rule, advancement and innovations made by FILSA. The award was received by attorney Dotgan Kaiko, one of the hosts of UNTV Servisyong Bayanihan program and also an awardee. Of course, I am very, very proud and I'm so happy na we have been really supporting them. And karapat dapat din naman na sila ay nabigyan din ng uh, space. Uh, Philippine Space Agency nabigyan ng space sa ating palabas. And we have always been their partner from the very first time that uh, their agency was created four years ago. UNTV will continue to support not only FILSA, but also other agencies aiming to assist every Filipino, in line with the station's advocacy of public service. Meanwhile, Politi Scoop, an online public affairs program, where UNTV's news director Michael Fahadan is one of the hosts, also received an award. FILSA has helped government agencies obtain crucial data for disaster planning and preparedness through the satellite launched by the agency into space. This has also led to accurate predictions of typhoon effects. Gladys Tuwabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Arkasang Bahay. As the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament. There is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God. From the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 10, it says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. And those are the reasons behind the news August 9, 2023. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Marvie Delphine, live from Australia.
Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Elsie Marcus, live from Auckland, New Zealand. We serve the people, we give glory to God.